Hello, everybody. Let's make sure that uh, let's make sure we're live and we are. So, everybody, uh, welcome to episode 63 of Job Seeker Live Talk. Uh, welcome, everybody, joining us live on Facebook, YouTube, of course, here on LinkedIn. You know that during our episodes, we're going to be sharing how job seekers can really best position themselves in today's job market. We're going to be providing various topics from resume tips, interviewing advice, and the real struggles that job seekers are having in landing that new career today. All right, let's get right to it, listeners. Uh, today, my guest is Ian Viner. And the, the reason that we're doing this show a little, a couple of hours early is because we're, we're going to respect Ian's time because he is coming in from across the pond, I guess they, they used to say or whatever. So, um, uh, hey, a good evening because it is 10 a.m. my time. I believe it might be 6 p.m. your time. It, it sure is. Uh, so good evening, David. Good, good evening. Hey, uh, do us a favor. Introduce yourself. Tell everybody a little bit about what you do, and then we'll get started. Yeah, so um, for the last 12 years, I've been a professional CV writer, um, but I, I like to think I give more than that, you know, um, so I also help people with um, reproducing their LinkedIn profile. It's all, it's all very well having a great CV or resume, as you call it, but actually most people forget about the LinkedIn profile, and, the, and this is the part of their um, advertising, if you like, that is often not very good. Um, and I also help people in generally um, with, with their whole job search strategy. You know, people might say to me, oh, guess what? I've just applied for 500 jobs and I've not got one single interview. Well, you know, so I tell them why um, and introduce them to other job search methods, uh, which generally have more success. So um, call me a CV writer, call me a career coach, call me a job search um expert call me all of those things um but essentially I, I do a bit of everything okay all right now you, you sound a little bit but like like me so uh so some people would say well dave why are you having another person that does what you do well because i like hearing you know various things and this show is about serving job seekers and you don't always want to hear from me so that's why i bring on guests that <laughs> do the same thing that you know as i do maybe occasionally that are aligned with uh you know uh strat job strategy and stuff so you know you mentioned linkedin so last week i had a guest that was a recruiter and he was a third party recruiter not in like an internal recruiter uh, and you know he was saying that Boy, you know, he may only glance over a resume, but that LinkedIn profile can really provide more value than a resume CV, you know, can ever do. So, you know, what do you tell those clients that are like, yeah, I think I just need help with my my CV. I don't think maybe LinkedIn is as important. How do you you know, sell them. And I'm not talking about, you know, actually selling, but, but how do you sell them up here that LinkedIn is very, very important? I, I think the simple answer to that is that it, it's one step at a time. If you, if you, if you take their existing CV, and, and in most cases, people will send me a copy of their existing resume, to let me have a look at and, and give you give give them a critique sure. and you know as i said to you before the show in 12 years i have never ever seen a good resume in other words by my standards which are acceptably very high um all of the cvs that i get are poor um and you know look some people don't like being told they have a poor cv some people will say to me oh i've just spent a hundred pounds on that cv and it's like, yeah, but it's still garbage. Okay. So the first thing that we need to do is to, is to, is to get that CV right. Um, and in, 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 many, in most cases, the CV is not right because it's just a boring list of duties and responsibilities. 
what I want to see from a resume on what we call measurable achievements. And that doesn't mean, inc oh, yeah, I increase sales by 10% because 10% of what? So I would much rather extract that information from the client by sitting down with them and saying, right, uh, you were there for five years. Okay, what was the turnover of the business when you started? Ah, right, yes, it was 10.4 million. Very good. And what is it five years later when, you, when you're looking to leave? Oh, yes, it was 15.3. So instead of putting down meaningless percentages, I would much rather write a bullet point that says increase sales from whatever I just said, 10.4 million to 15.3 million, and then how they did it by using the word buy. So blah, 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 buy winning new business with Walmart and whoever else there is over there. Sure. Um, introducing a new sales and marketing strategy um, and, and restructuring the sales force. So the, the, the two or three most important reasons how they did it. Um, so anyway, once we've written the CV, they've now got a CV with um, something like 27 bullet points, all with figures attached to each one, yes. which shows how they performed, what they achieved, and how they made a difference. Most people just don't do that. So once, you know, once we've got a nice shiny document, two pages, by the way, a nice shiny document at the end, um, I'll say to them, right, should we, should we look at your LinkedIn profile? Um, and it's like, oh, yes, okay, Ian, um, let's have a look at that. And by and large, none of that information on the new CV is anywhere near the LinkedIn profile. So, you know, you just gave me an example of maybe where a recruiter only looks at a CV for eight seconds or whatever it is, sure. but they actually look at the LinkedIn profile. Actually, from my own experience, the LinkedIn profile is worse. So a lot, we find a lot of people in this country, for example, right at the top of the CV, you know, they've got their name and contact details, and underneath, they'll have their LinkedIn URL. And I say, get rid of it. We don't want people moving away from looking at your CV onto a LinkedIn profile, which is, quite frankly, not worth looking at. Sure. So um, so the, the answer to your question is, you know, one thing at a time, let's get the CV done. Let's get all of the bullet points written and all of the information extracted out of you. Then we can possibly copy and paste that information um on onto the linkedin profile okay all right no that's 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 solid advice we don't want them going to their, your linkedin profile if the linkedin profile isn't very good just yet yes uh and everybody hey if you have any questions today make sure to put them in the comments i'll post them up there i'll i will we'll ask our guest and that way you can interact and make sure um, I know we got a few comments and we'll, we'll, we'll touch on those in a minute. Make sure to put down like where you're watching us from, which state, which country, what time zone, wherever time it is, wherever you're at. And I know we got a few people um, that I'll share here in a uh, in a minute. All right. So. I have a great resume. Now I've decided you've twisted my arm. I need a good LinkedIn profile. You know, from, from bad to good to great, you know, how do I, what are some tips? What are some must do's to my LinkedIn profile in order to make it, you know, worth somebody, you know, looking at it deeper or reaching out to me? Well, there's, um, as you know, there's a number number of things, a number of places within the profile that you can um, add to or, or edit. And, and, you know, if you start at the very, very top, um, you have to tell people what you do. So um, if you were a, you know, if you were a sales director, for, ex for example, for a, I don't know, for a television company or whatever, you know, it needs to say on LinkedIn, David Alto, sales director possibly you know within the audio visual industry or whatever you call it sure. um 
or if you don't want to be pigeonholed, just just leave it as sales director. Because mm -hmm. think of all of those people who are searching, doing a search on a sales director. If you've got a damn good profile and it says sales director all over your LinkedIn profile, you know, you'll come up on page one of the search, which is what you want to happen. If it says David Alto seeking new opportunities, the only piece, person who will find you is me. That's right, or me, yeah, or, or you, because <laughs> because when I do a LinkedIn search, I'm I'm putting in some I put in different things, but I will put in seeking new opportunities to target potential clients. Sure. So there's no there's no point putting seeking new opportunities. It's a complete waste of time. Okay, so what's what's next? Um, you've got a section called about, um, which for me is very similar to your opening profile or your opening executive summary on, on the resume. And please don't tell me that you're hardworking, passionate, and um, whatever else, punctual, um, because that's not going to attract anybody. So, for example, when I write a, a resume in that first line of the profile, and we, we use the example of a sales director, I might start it and say, you know, you're a highly strategic and commercially astute sales director with particular strengths in winning, winning new business with, with major multiple retail clients, um, managing a team of 10 sales executives across the whole of the UK. So including their strengths and also having a, a space for some of your soft skills, whether they be presentation skills, negotiation skills, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Don't tell me that you've got excellent interpersonal skills because um, you're laughing already. I can see, and trust me, when I see that, I, I normally fall off my chair. Um, and, 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 and as, as you know, there are lots of other things, you know, I could probably find some examples here that will make you laugh as well, um, where people say, you know, um, well, this, this guy says he's a sales professional, but, you know, at what level is he operating at? Is he a sales director, a sales manager, uh, or, or something else? So he's not actually telling people at what, at what level he's operating at. Yeah. Um, this guy says he's skilled in providing excellent customer service, care, and support. Very nice. But what what do you do, mate? Um, uh, and so and so on and so forth. So, um, and then further down the LinkedIn profile, obviously you've got your career history. Some people would just have a list of their jobs, but with nothing underneath it. Well, see, how do I we see know? that all the time. All the time. Yeah. How do we know? Um, what you've done in that company, how do we know what you've achieved in that company? We've just spent a, a day with you producing a new resume, which which highlights all of those things, but your, your LinkedIn profile's got nothing. Don't I don't want to see the words key responsibilities. I'm not I'm not interested. I only want to see bullet points which are achievement orientated. Um and that obviously applies for every job. And, and going going further down, you know, don't put down, you, you know, you're, you're the first job that you ever had in 1974. You know, I don't want to know that you're 73 years old because, quite frankly, at 73, you've got no chance of getting a job. So only go back 20 years maximum. And then further down the LinkedIn profile, you've got a section for skills. And some people endorsement, endorse them and some don't. But if you've got, make, make use of all 50 opportunities to write a skill down. I agree. Um, because sometimes the words in there can be used as key words. And then a little bit further down, we've got, oh, he's clapping. He must like something. Um, and then further down the LinkedIn profile, obviously, you've got an opportunity for references. Now, uh, in, in a previous LinkedIn account, which got shut down, I have 343 written recommendations. The more that you can get, the better. Um, they're absolutely invaluable. Now, 
on average, if we just summarize what I've just said, most people don't do any of that. They've got very basic LinkedIn profiles, which which tell you nothing. So there's there's my <laughs> long winded answer. No, that no, that was perfect. We do have a question. I'll post that in a minute. So yes, everybody, uh, please go to Ian's um, uh, LinkedIn profile. And again, yes, um, in in a previous account, uh, you know, almost thirty thousand, uh, almost thirty thousand connections, tons of followers, tons of recommendations. So don't look at his profile and only look at the number of connections or followers he has now. He is the real deal. Uh, we are really aligned. And I could tell by some of the posts that you were posting. And that's why I wanted you on the show. I can tell that we're aligned with a lot of things and even just talking with you today. So that's why I'm happy to have you on the on the show. Let's uh, I want to say hello to a few people and just give recognition a very new very new connection of mine. So, hey, thank you for uh, showing up and uh, uh, supporting us uh, here today. Uh, Nadia from uh, Ann Arbor, Michigan. Nadia, thank you for showing up uh, today. Uh, and uh, before I get to a few others, we do, like I said, we do have a, we do have a question. Um, this question uh, coming uh, in from India. Uh, what is maybe the best feature on LinkedIn? Just, just in your, you know, in your opinion, you know, if I'm a job seeker, what's the best thing that I, I could leverage LinkedIn for on my profile? And maybe what's the least used feature or, you know, maybe, you know, one that I shouldn't care about as much. So for, let's take the first one. If I could nail one thing right on my LinkedIn profile. Um, well, uh, as, as I said before, that, that little slot underneath your name is absolutely crucial. I agree. As I said, if you're a sales director, put down sales director. Don't put down looking for new opportunities. Don't, don't, don't put down, you know, your life story in there. Um, be very, very, very specific about what it is that you do. Um, I mean, obviously, there are lots of lots of different features on on LinkedIn. Um, you know, there's obviously a job section for you um, when you're applying for jobs, and it, in some cases, when you get that far, it'll hit you with the button "Easy Apply," so you don't have to think about writing unnecessary cover letters or stuff that you're uncomfortable with. You literally just press a couple of buttons easy apply application gone whether you get a reply or not is, is a completely different subject and i understand people's frustrations when you don't get a reply even if it's to say no um there's a whole separate <laughs> probably a separate um podcast that we could that we could organize just to talk about recruiters what they do well what they don't do well what they could do better but let's not get into that um too much today um obviously the, the the meat of the linkedin profile where you've got your your career history but as i said before populate it with achievements don't populate it with you know i made the tea and the coffee and i bought some office supplies it, it doesn't show how you made a difference and and how you contributed to the company's success um what don't i like about linkedin um, <laughs> I'd probably have to say the fact that, you know, if you do something wrong, then they'll close your account down. But, um, um, yeah, their customer service is terrible. I mean, from what I little I know, they sit in a little office or maybe a big office somewhere in over your neck of the woods or maybe a bit further down in California. And um, you can't speak to them they're inaccessible on the telephone i mean how an organization like that does not have a telephone customer service department is beyond me they've missed a trick there and even if you if you do raise a ticket um it comes from one standard email address you know um you're nodding your head so you've obviously had some experience of that and, oh, yeah. uh, and, every, and every time it's from a different name yes um 
so I, I would have to say that the worst feature on LinkedIn is is absolutely their customer service and also how long it takes them to actually reply to you. Um, it, it seems to me they have a monopoly um, in, in business networking. Um, you know, you can look at Facebook, Instagram, whatever else there is there. None of them uh, do what LinkedIn does. Um, and I would, I would love it sometime in my lifetime um, if somebody, some entrepreneur would come along and, and start some competition for LinkedIn. There's, you know, I, I've, I've been on a couple other platforms, but again, you know, um, almost the same feel. But, you know, when you got, you know, when you got a big monster like, you know, like LinkedIn, um, yes. Now they they do make updates and they make some great ones, but then sometimes they make some updates like you wasted your time on that when we really need this. Or whatever. And I, and I get it. I get it. Um, but I think, um, you know, the section that probably, you know, by the time you get past recommendations, there's some other things, patents and other projects that you can add. Most people are not going to make it that far down on your LinkedIn profile. So don't believe that if you're going to put, you know, all those patents and projects down at the very, very, very bottom, a lot of people might not even look at those. So, you know, where you want to talk about those projects, like Ian was saying, is in the job itself with and bullet points, you know, or maybe it's a maybe it's a project that you can almost make its own paragraph and its own bullet points within your job because it, the the project was so um, so vast. So, let's say I, hello. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say um, I've just noticed in the comments um, there's a comment from somebody called Michael Chan, um, who who is one of my previous uh, clients. Oh, very and, good. And he's been very loyal to me over the years. And uh, he says, "Greetings from Hong Kong. Great to see you." Well, I can't see you, Michael, but you're. Um, it must be very late in the evening in Hong Kong, so you're probably sitting in some some bar uh, with a few beers. So um, um, don't stay up too late. Um, you know, it's almost must be time for bed over there. It, to be honest, it might be tomorrow already. Um, I think they're actually, I think they're seven hours ahead, so it must be. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Yeah, it, it could be one thirty in the morning, Michael. So, um, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, hey, uh, greetings from Nigeria. Hey, thank you for uh, showing up uh, today. Uh, let's see who else we got here. Um, and uh, and hello to you. Thank you for showing up. Omar, hello. Good Karen. evening. Karen, Good evening. Karen, Karen Lyon is online. Karen, oh, no. Karen, um, greetings she's from watch, you. She's watching us on YouTube right now. Oh, I don't get, too, don't get too many uh, viewers actually watching us on YouTube. Thank you. Uh, thank I, you I, don't know how, I don't know how you're doing that, Karen. You're far too technical for me. <laughs> but um, uh, once again, a very long and loyal client. And, um, and she's great company too. I love it. So yeah, I go live on YouTube too. So she's over there checking everybody out. I love it. Um, and, uh, and uh, Hey, it says, thank you for that advice that you were talking about, uh, regarding, uh, uh most used be best use features. So we'll get to a few other, uh, comments in, 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 uh, just, uh, in just a second. Um, but all right. So I have an amazing resume because you've created it. I have a great, amazing LinkedIn profile because you helped me. Uh, you helped me build it and get all those things out on my LinkedIn profile. Okay, great. I got to apply for some jobs, right? I got to apply for some jobs. What are some best practices? Or you know what? Let me rephrase that. What are some struggles that you're seeing job seekers have Um by getting interviews, even, even though maybe they already have that resume, great resume and great LinkedIn, you know, maybe they're still not getting a lot of traction, um, getting interviews. What are some things that they can, you know, maybe do to speed up the, that process of starting to get that phone to ring? Yeah. I mean, there's, as, as we said before, there are different 
job search methods. There are different job search strategies. So let's just take one at a time. So the old fashioned way is that um, certainly in this country, we've got a handful of of major job sites, major job boards. Yeah. yeah. Indeed, read total jobs. Uh, there used to be one called Monster. I don't know if that's still around. It's Seems still around. And, yeah. and CV library. So there's just five off the top of my head. There aren't there aren't hundreds of others. And you could probably say to every job seeker or, or hear from every job seeker that every day they are going on to LinkedIn, they're going on to read, et cetera, et cetera. Well, guess what? So are 500 others. So you're always going to get competition. Competition might be healthy, but, you know, you just want the job. You want that job to be yours. And you've, looked, right. at the, you've looked at the job spec and you think, right, that's very good. That's right up my street. I'm the ideal candidate. But what you don't know is that there's 499 other people who think the same thing. So what do we do? We hit that apply button because it, it, it it's the obvious thing to do. But is that the right thing to do? Probably not. So what happens when you hit the apply button? Your CV goes into outer space and it normally goes into what we call an automatic tracking system. Yes. a piece of software which most recruiters will use these days. And it will stay in that automatic tracking system along with the 500 others. Then the, then the recruiter says to the ATS, right, okay, I want you to find me the top five or six resumes um, which will, have all got the following words. And it could be sales director, it could be negotiation skills, it could be anything. Sure. So you're, you're relying on a computer to churn out the top six CVs from a, let's say, 500. Yeah. Is that the right way to do it? I say not. The human element has gone from that. The only six CVs that the recruiter will see are, they, are those six that the computer has churned out. He won't even know who the 494 others are even from. So they take, they take out the top six. Are they necessarily the best six? I say no. Nevertheless, they take what they think are the top six, have a few conversations, possibly meet a couple of candidates, and literally... And no recruiter will agree with me here. They probably think I'm talking complete nonsense, but hear me out. They throw those CVs at the client. The client thinks that the recruiter are doing an amazing job and they've, you know, whittled down 500 CVs to six. Sure. And somebody will probably get offered the job out of those six. Yes. Have the company ultimately hired the right, the best person for the job? Possibly not. So... That's a very frustrating process to go through if you're a candidate because you'll never hear anything back yes. in most cases. The 494 people who got left behind will never hear a thing. So what's the answer? Right, so you go back to the original advert and instead of clicking that apply button, you pick up one of these. And, um, or oh, you, might, you might have one of these, but either way, you pick up, you pick up the phone and you call the recruitment company hello i've just seen your advert on indeed for a sales director can i spend a couple of minutes talking to you about that job um and you chat with the recruiter you build build up a rapport with the recruiter and of course by the end it's like oh give me your uh, give me your email address so i can send you my cv directly because there's no point sending it into the automatic tracking system. It will just get lost. Give me your email address. I'm going to send you my CV personally. And I'm going to call you either later today or tomorrow morning just to make sure that you've received it. So you call him the next day. Oh, hello, John or whoever he is. Did you get my CV? Ah, yes, I did. Um, and you might want to leave it a few days and ring him again. Oh, how are you progressing with my application? And it's like, oh, not him again. Um, until you, you know, you're until you're reasonably satisfied 
that he's going to put your CV forward to the client. Now, there's still competition. There's still going to be six CVs going forward, but six is a lot better than 500. So that's just, for me, that's just one absolute no-brainer when it comes to advising people what to do with advertise vacancies. No, that's that's spot on. And now, obviously, maybe there's nobody to call. You can't find a number or whatever. Hey, there's this great thing called LinkedIn. You could, you know, um, you know, do that. So um, let, this is a good point. This is a good stopping point just for a second. What we're yep. going to do, what we're going to do, we're going to I'm going to tease. I'm going to tease our uh, uh, I'm going to tease our listeners, viewers, as you would say, yeah. Uh whether they're on LinkedIn, Facebook, or YouTube, like we have somebody watching us on YouTube today, mm-hmm. um, I'm going to play. A, I'm going to play a little um, ad from our sponsor, and then we're going to share your website and talk a little bit about something that job seekers might be able to do to, you know, to get get that CV reviewed uh, by you. So. Hold on, everybody. Uh, we're going to watch a little uh, ad from our sponsor. I'll, I'll talk about it just briefly, and we'll be right back, and we're going we're gonna to share some uh, great insights into uh, uh, Ian's, Ian's website there. So hold on here, and here we go. Hi, I'm Frank Abrams, the founder and CEO of My Job Score. Are you looking for a job, a better opportunity, a higher-paying job with a future? Discover my job score and increase your chances to get the interview and the job, and it's free. Get your job score, and when you apply, include your score with your resume. A high score will attract the attention of the hiring manager. Then comes interviews and job offers. Didn't get a good score? Keep looking at different jobs until you get a higher score, then apply. It's free. How good is that? You need to use your Chrome browser with the My Job Score extension. Look for jobs, download your score, and that's it. Send in your score when you apply. Increase your chances to get the interview and the job, and it's free. All right, everybody. So, My Job Score. So, I've teamed up with My Job Score to offer you their paid version for free. I'll put a link in there. And what this does, this briefly uh, compares your resume to the job you see on Indeed or LinkedIn or any job board, quickly tells you how much you match up. It's it's a cool new software. Now, it's not going to guarantee you're going to get a job or whatever, but it, what it does, it maybe feels, maybe you feel a little bit more confident or you go, I don't match up to that job. Maybe I'm missing some great skills or maybe I should check myself and say, you know what? I'm not that qualified for that particular job. You know, I think you would agree with me. If you're applying for a hundred jobs in a week, you're probably applying for a lot that you're not qualified for, right? Underqualified, probably underqualified, maybe overqualified or whatever. But if you're applying for a hundred a week, you're probably hitting apply, 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 apply. Need to be a little bit more strategic, like Ian was saying. Uh, so on that, let's share. I want to share your um, website here, and you can walk me through some of the. Uh, well, let me. So let's say I'm interested in having you review my CV or write it. Um, what can they expect from you know from you? Um, I, I've, oft, I've often been told that, that my reviews are quite um, blunt um, and they're quite, they're quite direct. Um, but, you know, there is no point telling somebody, there's no point telling any of these people here that they have a good CV when, in fact, they don't. Um, and it could, it could be the layout, it could be the content, you know, it could be those dreaded words at the end, references available on request, which, which is one of my pet hates. Um, why is somebody putting down that they have a full clean driving license 
when they're not they're not applying for a job as a bus driver. Um, so it does kind of it kind of beggars belief um, some of the irrelevant stuff that people put down. But in answer to your question, they will get a fairly lengthy, a fairly comprehensive review of the CV. Um, and I have a section called first impressions. And the first impressions might be, well, you know, so let's just take this guy at complete random. Um, first impressions on this CV, he does not have a contact telephone number or email address at the top of the CV. How on earth is anybody going to contact them if we don't know how to get hold of you? That could be the best candidate ever. That could be the best candidate ever. And oh, my gosh, I can't call him or her. He claims that he's a sales professional which, as I said before, is, is meaningless. He needs to tell me at what level he's operating at. So tell me that you're a sales director, a sales manager. We, we use things like business development manager, national account managers to also describe different sales positions. So be specific. Tell me what level you are operating at. Um, this particular guy in, under every single job has used paragraphs. There's nothing worse than looking at a CV and seeing a paragraph. Um, so in other words, I, I like to see bullet points, but I'm also very fussy about the length of a bullet point. So I will actually say a one line bullet point is too short because it doesn't say anything. Sure. A two line bullet point is just the right length for them to grasp what you're trying to say. And don't even think about four five or six line bullet points because that will send me to sleep. <laughs> hey, um, you can see that for the interview. You could say that yeah. for the interview, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, this particular guy's got a four-page four resume. Um, there's far too many jobs on there. And when it comes down to education, this guy lists what we call O-levels. So I don't know what the equivalent qualification is in the States, but an O-level um, is something that you, you take it when you're 16. And some, some years ago, the terminology was changed from O levels to GCSEs. Same thing, but different terminology. So if you're somebody who's putting down O levels, I automatically know how old this guy is because he's referring to, the, to an old qualification. He's also writing down that he did the O levels um, in 1987. So I can automatically get my calculator out because I'm a bit slow here. Um, but I can automatically work out how old this guy is, which yeah. could be a big negative. Um, and, and, you know, people often have a section called key skills. It's a, a number, it's another one of my no-nos, um, particularly at the bottom of page four. Um, if you've got, you know, good negotiation skills, presentation skills, where should they be? Right at the top of the CV in the opening profile, where they're going to get noticed. So, oh, he's clapping. So, um, you know, my my review is straight to the point. Um, I don't beat about the bush. Um, but if people are coming to me and they want the review, then I'll, then I'll be honest and say, I'm sorry, mate, but it's... I don't use the word rubbish or garbage, but um, reading, between, <laughs> reading between the lines, that's that's essentially what I'm saying. No, I, I, hey, you know what? I give that dad advice to, you know, hey, it's this, it's this. Maybe it's not what you wanted to hear, but that's why you came to me, right? Same thing, same thing for you. So let's uh, let's shout out to a couple other people, and then I have some questions. Um, all the way from Italy. All the way from Italy, thank you very much. And Omar says his regards from Syria. We are all over the globe. And uh, thank you, friend. thank you, friend, for showing up uh, here. And uh, and your buddy Michael. Well, he's he ob he's obviously got insomnia because he can't get to sleep in in Hong Kong at this. Well, this, he, this time he's, of night. He's too busy getting ready for interviews because he would just like to add that he's been able to adapt and tailor your methods to work here in Hong Kong. He's getting regular interviews on a weekly basis. So he's staying up late right now. Michael is preparing for those interviews. So yeah. that's why he's up so late. Um, no, listen, you know, it's, it's, it's great to hear that. And, um, you know, I've, I've had 
hundreds upon hundreds of successful clients over, over the years. Um, but, you know, equally, not everybody says yes. You know, some people um, come back and say, well, you know, it sounds like you've got a great process, but I just can't afford it. So, yes. you know, s- sadly, um, I'm, I'm not the cheapest in the market. You know, over here, you can go online, find a CV for £50. Oh, sure. um, it's just not worth doing because the result is so bad. You know, keep the £50 in your pocket and, yeah. and, and you know, take my advice from the free review and try and implement that advice and do it yourself. Yes. Um, but if you have got the money, then, as I said to you earlier, I usually meet all of my clients in person. There's no point trying to do it over the phone or, or filling in a form and sending it back by email. The best way to, to get information out of a client is to sit down with them and say, right, what was the turnover of that company when you started? What was it when you finished? Let's tell the reader how you've grown the business by that amount over X number of years and how you did it. And whether it's gaining business or, or reducing costs um, or improving your customer service scores, and there's all sorts of different measurables when it comes to that, there are so many things that you can extract out of people which they would never have heard of in the first place. Okay. So that being said, most of your clients are in London, greater area. I mean, do you, you will help people, though, if somebody's here in the U.S. and they want to do business with you, will you? Yes, absolutely. Um, oh. I had a very successful client. I think he lived in Denver, and okay. um, he, he was a, quite a, a high-powered powered lawyer. And, um, yeah, I mean, obviously, we did it all online. We had a number of sessions on, on Zoom or Teams uh, sure. and broke, broke those sessions up into three or four sessions and um yeah i've i've had clients fly in to the uk from france from greece from switzerland um as as well as coming coming down to to the south from all all over the country um as i said earlier you know obviously our country is a little bit a little bit smaller than yours so um i wouldn't expect uh, somebody to sort of you know, drive up from Miami to Seattle, you know, to come and see you because um, yeah. it would probably take take God knows how long to get there. But, um, you know, I mean, o- over here, distances are a lot smaller. People can come and see me for the day. And um, it's so much better to sit down with a client face to face. Um, and I, and, and that, that is what makes me different from other CV writers, spending quality time with people um and and talking about you know using the day to talk about job search and and other things that they're struggling with as well okay i want to look at so let me ask you this you know um i get asked this quite a bit so you know if, if somebody were to hire you today and they needed to tweak their resume five years from now, are they going to need you or should they be able to maybe just take what you've done and expand on that? Um, the simple answer is they could try and update a resume f- for themselves. Sure. Um, but, but from experience, they usually ruin it. Um so I've, I've actually had um, probably a, a, maybe a handful of clients this year who, who were previous clients and they've contacted me to say, all oh, right, you know, I've, since, since you wrote my resume two years ago, I've had another job. So I'd like to just um, run, run it through with you and, uh, and update the CV. Um, and, and sometimes I've done it online. Sometimes I've actually met the person, even if it's only for two hours. A guy contacted me recently. It was bank holiday weekend over here. And he was like badgering me by text. You know, I need you. I need you. And I'm saying, um, excuse me. It's, you know, it's it's bank holiday weekend. I'm sitting there with my feet up, you know, watching the watching the soccer on TV. Sure. And uh, he said, oh, you know, I'll I'll pay you double. I'll pay you lots of, lots of money. And um, 
I went out on whatever the date was, Monday the 29th of August, bank holiday Monday here, met this guy for two hours. And um, I've still I've still got most of the um, I've still got most of the money sitting sitting here. So, um, you know, very, very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Too. Uh, I won't I won't tell you anybody where I live. So uh, I'm putting this putting this. I love the, I love the visuals. You got out the phone from the, you know, the corded phone. I, you know, the head. Well, the headset, you know, the headsets. Corded. Oh, this is a this is a good old fashioned uh, telephone. It doesn't have a rotary, though, does it? A rotary. What's a rotary? Well, you know, it not the push buttons, but remember when we used to, okay, all right, it's not that old. No, I was talking about the one that, you know, that you had to go, da 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 It's not, oh, you no. don't have one of them around. Yeah, no, I definitely don't have any of those, no. Um, oh, we've got, we got lots of... Um, We've got lots of things here. Some sometimes a client will appear on screen, you know, and the, the little child, the two or three year old child, will just walk in. So um, at, at, at that point, I normally I normally get out my cuddly toy just to just to keep the um, the, the child amused. And it's sure. it's probably a bit unprofessional for this broadcast, but anyway, um, oh. he, he 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 wanted to he wanted to say hello. So. Um, Hello, Michael in Hong Kong. Hello, Karen in Nottingham or wherever you are. And hello to everybody else around the world. Um, and his name is literally just Lion. lion. You know, it's not I Dave love. the Lion or Lenny the Lion. He's just called Lion. And he was he was he was given these. Yeah, your hair's a mess, isn't it? Honestly. Um, and um, he was given that name by by my daughter, who's now twenty six, and. Um, we used, we used to play every night before bedtime when it was time for a story. Um, but um, any, anyway, he does he lo does lots of other tricks as well. But um, he, he can't he can't write a CV, can you? No. All right. Say goodbye today. That is a, that is a first. We've seen a corded phone. We've seen <laughs> money been flashed, and we see lion. Now, hey, now that you bring up lion, yeah. <laughs> now that you bring up lion. Oh, we used dear. to see that. We used to see that in everybody's headline a long time ago, right? Lion, yeah, right, right. Is it? Can I put lion on my headline anymore? Should oh, I? I don't. I don't know. It's if it's your headline, you do it. Do what you like. <laughs> but um, um, LinkedIn opened a network, right? Um, oh, somebody Something sent like a somebody sent a message saying, "Hi, lion, how are you?" Well, um, Mr. lion needs his own show. Lion needs well. I can we can listen if um, if you've been happy with uh, this show, maybe we can uh, do this again some other time, and um, we can we can we can have a chat with Lion while and, and see what he's got to say about uh, resumes and uh, the job market. Now you said we're we're going to get ready to wrap up. Hey, I'm going to have all your links to your website, your email, your LinkedIn profile that everybody should go to. Hey, you know if you're you know, if you live near uh, our guest and you want your, um, you know, want a new resume, LinkedIn, or maybe you don't even live close, um, but you need that resume reviewed, go to the website, check it out. He'll give you, he'll give you some honest feedback. You better be ready to accept Lion's feedback of your resume because maybe, <laughs> um, but anyway, um, so you'd mentioned you know, a, a two-page resume. Now, you and I are old enough to remember when, hey, you got everything, and this was a long time ago, way before I did resumes, but you got everything on a one-page resume, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You got, I mean, that was the thing. So tell us why maybe that isn't the best thing, you know, for us now. You know, oh. why... Why is it? Why is the resume developed into a little bit more content? I, 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 I every single CV writer's got their their own take on this, and you know you could argue that there's no right or wrong. You know, even even recruiters will say, "Yeah, I don't mind five page CV," but of course, as we said earlier, they only spend eight seconds looking at it. So, what's the what is the point? I, I've seen one page, I've seen 20 page resumes. So um, 
why why am I always promoting a two pager? It's long enough to cover a reasonable amount of your career, yes. but short enough to be concise and to the point. Okay. Because I can I can guarantee nobody is going to read five pages or whatever it, whatever it is. If I if I if I go to my to my list over here, the one I was talking about recently is uh, actually it's it's five pages. You know. That's a that's a complete nonsense. Um, this particular guy at the top tells me that it's a curriculum vitae. Well, talk about stating the obvious. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, curri Even curri curriculum vitae is a very old-fashioned name, um, and that's that's where we get CV from. But um, it's like you know when you go shopping and you you open your cupboard, you open the fridge. You get you get a post-it note out, and you write down you know potatoes and carrots and cheese and what. At the top, do you actually write shopping list? No, you yeah. don't because it's obvious what it is. So, to all of those lovely people out there, please do not write the words curriculum vitae. We know what it is. Um, now, here's here's a guy. I'll just block his name out for security reasons. Here's a guy who's produced a one-page CV, and he's got sure. this if you like the two a two column format to try oh he's shaking his head um you you've got the two column format to try and get it all in and it and yeah. it doesn't it doesn't work one of my pet hates is the two column format up here on the right you've got a section called skills complete waste of space um interests reading writing and sketching don't yes. care i'm not interested um <laughs> And then his work experience takes up um, that amount of space. I don't know if you can see that. that yeah, oh, yeah. We can see it. I see those all the time. It's just, well, I'm sure you do. It's just not enough. So no. for, for me, a one-page CV says absolutely nothing. The only uh, thing better, the only thing better that would make that two-column resume better is if it had a bunch of color and graphics. Uh, well, for what, for, well, uh, you you may be able to tell that that's got a little bit of blue at the top and whatever. Oh, yes. Um, sadly, I don't. I'm I'm not a great fan of color. Um, all all of my my resumes are in are in black, boring black and white. Um, obviously, if you've got a if you've got a graphic designer, sure, who, who needs to get across how creative they are, then. You know, by all means, bring your coloured pencils or whatever you bring along. Um, um, I will help you with the content and, and your achievements. If you want to make it a bit more fancy, then you know, then then please be my guest. Sure. Um, so, for me, it's two pages, no, no more. All right. Well, I only laugh because you and I are aligned so much on on everything that you mentioned today. And that's why I'll always be a I'll always be a fan. I'm going to make sure to comment and engage with your content. You know, anybody that lives near you, I'm going to send them to you uh, just because if you can meet them in person. Yes, that's a little more uh, personal. We're going to end on this um, now. Um, our, our, our viewer in Italy says in France, they want a one page and Italy as well. Now, mm -hmm. I'm not going to say you're right or wrong. I've had clients, not a lot, but there that I've created two page resumes for and they still landed jobs. So, you know, sometimes we assume that certain places or whatever want certain things or whatever. It's more organizations. And if it's a global organization, they're probably used to seeing, you know, maybe they're based in the U.S. and they have, you know, satellite offices everywhere. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I we hear certain things as resume writers, but I've still created two page resumes for people uh, in Italy in that area. And they still end up getting jobs. So I think it's more you can say it's culture. But I really think it's tied to whoever is looking at it or maybe that organization. What do you think on that? 
Yeah, I mean, it's impossible for me to know what happens in every every country in the world because sure. there are there are always um, slight differences. Um, you know, there's, there's even differences between the UK and the US. Um, so I, I, I can accept in certain circumstances, you know, um, Marie says that um, in France they want one pages. Um, does a one pager really sell you? In my opinion, no. Um, are they asking for only one page? Because they're not, as we know, they're not, they're not even going to read read past the first paragraph sure. possibly um do they just want a snippet of information because they're going to draw that out of you in the interview again possibly but unless it unless you're promoting yourself on the cv they're not going to know about it you're never going to get as far as the interview so i i think for all of the arguments i've heard over the years um i would still come back to my two-page resume. I, I, I totally agree. Now we got to give them what they want. If they say they only want a one, then you know, obviously, that's what we got to turn in. Um, so, yeah, no, I do get it. So, um, hey, I really appreciate you showing up today. We're aligned on everything, so I'm going to enjoy looking at your content. I really enjoyed. Um, the flashing of the of the of the cash and I <laughs> hey, I did uh, that's 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 a first and I like to have a lot of fun um, you know we can be serious but have fun you know still fun um, I enjoyed meeting Lion Lion if Lion's never made Lion needs to make a LinkedIn appearance maybe on some posts and stuff too uh, maybe you know uh, uh, you know uh, question corner with Lion or some you know just some I don't know anyway. <laughs> But I appreciate that. Um, hey, everybody, if you got value today, make sure that you put in the comments that you got value. Um, and hey, if you liked Lion, make sure in the comments that you, you, that you liked uh, Lion. But all seriousness, I'll have a link to your website so people can uh, reach out to you. Remember, when you go to his profile, that, you know, before it got, you know, shut down and he got, you know, back on over 29,000 connections, over 300,000 or 300,000, 300 plus uh, recommendations. I almost said 300, that that have been a few, uh, 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 you know, and if you follow me, please follow my guests because we're aligned on the same things when it comes to helping job seekers. Um, so uh my son my son mm -hmm. uh, my son's looking for a job but is not easy to find it is not make sure to um uh, uh follow our guest uh take on take this little tidbits of advice that you see on linkedin visit the website and uh, i really appreciate you uh coming on today Thank you, David. Uh, wish you all the very best. Uh, wish uh, thank thank you to all of the guests who've uh, come along and, uh, and listened and watched. And um, I hope to see you again on here, um, maybe in the future. Oh, hey, I'll welcome you back. So if you want to come back, I'm happy to, as long as I can see Lion. And uh, quit flashing all that money because you're making me jealous. So you're making too much. Well, uh, it's this this money is you know because of the cost of living because because of the economy over here um this money is not worth anything you know it's it, it's just pieces of paper that um that don't that don't last very long anymore so um uh yeah it's 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 pretty tough over here at the moment you know we have a new new prime minister yesterday let's let's see what she's she's got to offer and um yeah, but, um, you know, electricity bills, energy bills are, are a challenge at the moment. Um, petrol or gas, as you call it, has been um, has been a problem. And, and just food bills, you know, you go and buy a bottle of water or a loaf of bread in the supermarket. It's so much more expensive than it used to be. Um, sadly, the, the, the price price of my CVs has just about stayed the same. But I do vary the price according to the client. 
So, yeah. you know, if you're if you're a chief executive or a managing director, you're going to pay more than if you, you know, are our friend the sales professional. Um, and and a lot of a lot of um, CV writers do that. They've got different different price levels. Um, like anything in life, you get what you pay for. That is absolutely correct. If you want a cheap £50 resume, write it yourself. If you want a quality resume where I'm going to sit down with you for the whole day and write it properly, then invest not only in your money, but also your time. It makes a massive difference. I totally agree. And I think you have a friend. I think you have a fan. I think you have a fan. So uh, make sure, check out his website. Make sure to uh, follow him on LinkedIn if you're not already. Yeah, and, somebody, uh, this, uh, this Marie lady says we may meet if I stop by to London. Well, there's, a, yeah. there's, an, offer, there's an offer I can't refuse. That's right. What's your favorite go-to beverage? I, I hear she's buying. She's buying the drinks. Yes. Well, um, it, it varies actually. I, I, you know, sometimes it may be beer. Sometimes it could be cider. Sometimes it could be anything. So, um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not fussy. All right. All right. Well, hey, thank you very much for showing up today, providing your knowledge to uh, job seekers, and I will see you on LinkedIn. Oh, uh, you can. If, if you check out, um, this will automatically create a post on LinkedIn automatically. Okay. okay. So you can engage then, whether it's tonight or tomorrow, but you can engage with the people that made these comments. Mm -hmm. um, so it'll it'll create a post on LinkedIn. So Lovely. All right. Good. All right. Well, um, I would say enjoy the rest of your day. Um, it's now, now seven o'clock over here. Um, the only thing I'll be doing tonight is watching soccer on, on TV um, because my beloved Liverpool are playing tonight in, um, in, in Italy. So um, let's, 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 let's hope for a good result in, in uh, Naples. All right. I'm wishing, I'm wishing best of luck. <laughs> right. Um, I'm looking. I'm looking. At, I'm looking at a button that says "Leave Studio." So, um, I, pre I presumably, I presumably need to click on that button to say goodbye. Or I'll, 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 I'll get rid of you. So, oh, hey, I'll, you. I'll, see, I'll see you on LinkedIn, and there will be a next time. I'll see you next time. Cheers, David. Bye for right. now. Bye bye. All right, everybody. Hey, for me, it's always great when I align with somebody, another resume writer and, you know, Ian, great job. So make sure if you're connected to me, if you're watching, go to uh, Ian's LinkedIn, make sure you're following him. Uh Oh, I think we got, we, I think we got a rivalry there, Marie. So anyway, uh, let's make sure again, follow Ian. And what I want to share is, um, Oh, and hey, thank you. Uh, what I want to share now is I'm going to be on a live tomorrow. Instead of me going live, I'm going to be live on a show tomorrow. I just want to show you briefly um, where it is. And let me pull it up here. Now, if you can still hear me. So um, this will be at... Um, 11 a.m. Eastern tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. Pacific. Tomorrow morning. Anyway, we're going to talk about the secret to attract the best talent in the world. Yes, in the world. So we're going to be talking about that. Hey, I'm very grateful. Uh, that you invited me uh, on the show kind of last minute there. So, hey, uh, I'll, don't worry, I'll, I'll be ready. Uh, but anybody, if you, if, you, if you have some time, I'll put a link uh, to join and uh, hit uh, uh, attend. And I look forward to uh, seeing maybe uh, some of you are there. Hey, thank you again to our sponsor, My Job Score. Remember, if you download the Chrome extension, I'll put a link in the comments right after this. I'll put a link in there. 
um, it'll be myjobscore.com backslash David Alto. If you click on that link, you're going to be able to download that Chrome extension, use it on any job site to match your resume to the job very quickly within seconds. And I part, I've partnered with them to be the only coach to give you just because you're connected to me, just because you're following, you're watching my live, you're, you're engaging with my content, which I really appreciate. But I'm the only coach out there providing the paid service for free. So my job score and I, uh, Frank, the owner, and I have come up with a plan to, to do that because I know that matching up that job prior to applying can help you well, one, be confident that you're, you know, that you you increase the likelihood of you receiving a call. It's absolutely free. And there's no spamming or anything like that. Again, you're just going to provide your, you're going to upload your resume, your email, and your zip code. And then when you're at a job, it quickly matches and gives you a score and you feel a little confident or you adjust your resume a little bit to the missing, maybe some missing skills that you don't have in there based on the job description. Uh, or maybe you don't apply because maybe you're not even close to being a match, meaning maybe it's not a job that you should be applying for. It's not about applying for 100 jobs. It's really slowing down and applying for jobs that you're really qualified for. That's it, everybody. Hey, thank you very much for showing up. For those of you watching on Facebook, YouTube, we had a few uh, viewers on YouTube. I appreciate that. Uh, and of course, here on LinkedIn. And as always, I hope you make the rest of this week your best week ever. Bye for now, everybody.